only to those who are policy makers ensconced in government. It is important that uh, people from many walks of life um, take a serious interest in public policy and try to influence policy um, and become a, a, a motivator for change uh, in the business. And what has happened really is that there is now more recognition on the part of the government that government does not know everything, um, that it cannot do everything, and that it needs uh, the cooperation and participation of other actors in society to be able to make headway. Now, this is a late realization, unfortunately. And as um, uh, Dr. Patnaik mentioned, uh, we are still to recover quite from the uh, colonial legacy, the colonial wound, if you like. Um, because you see, the Indian civil service started in 1858. Um, 1857 was the first war on independence, um, which British textbooks call the Sepoy Mutiny. Um, but it was uh, a rebellion against the British rule. And in um, 1857, uh, uh, the state took over the affairs of the East India Company and uh, established the sovereignty of Queen Victoria over uh, territories. Uh, there were 250 districts at the time in British India. So in 1858, um, it was decided to start a permanent civil service for India. Um, and, uh, and of course, it's not the first time that that's happened. Um, the term Mandarin in uh, China refers to a, a bureaucrat uh, who would uh, pass a civil service examination and get chosen to serve the state. Um, and so the Indian civil service was born in 1858. And at that time, the British government did not recruit civil servants through a competitive exam. It was done mainly, and at that time only, um, for India. And, and these were very young people um, who, uh, you know, they were sent to um, initially to um, Oxford, it so happened to the college where I was, um, it's Balliol College. It's to this day known as the Black Man's College because um, a number of, uh, later on when the Indians were permitted to come into the civil service, um, you know, they, a lot, large number of them went to this particular college in Oxford. So there is a limerick that I remember when I was in that college that I heard about the master of the college at the time who was very supportive of training uh, civil service officers to come and work in India. So they would, they would have courses in Sanskrit and Persian because the Indian la official language for the Mughals um, was Persian. And a number of our official records, including land records, um, are in Persian to this day. Um, and so they'd learn some Sanskrit, they'd learn some Persian, um, I learn a little bit about the history and the geography of the country um, and so on. And so the Limerick in o Oxford was about this master who supported the training of ICS officers. Um, his name was uh, Benjamin Jowett. And the Limerick is, my name is Benjamin Jowett. I am the master of this college. And what I don't know isn't knowledge. Now, this attitude that what I don't know doesn't matter and isn't knowledge is something that unfortunately has been transmitted from the ICS to its successor um, services in India, the administrative and the central civil services. A general attitude that, you know, once you, you are the heaven born, the ICS was called. Um, now the successors also regard themselves as, you know, somewhat of great achievers because of a wretched, ridiculous, uh, competitive exam that relies on rote learning. You have to know the exact dates of the three battles of Panipat. Uh, you know, you could easily look it up. You don't have to carry it in your head. But unfortunately, as in most of our educational system, there's a lot of emphasis in the civil service examinations on this. Now, to my horror, I discovered when I looked at the public, they don't have anything called public policy in the um, syllabus for the UPSC, uh, they have public administration. And if you look at that, this day, um, it has 
the prescribed readings are of the 60s, American writers on public administration. 